Today, after consulting with my auto task force, I can report that the necessary steps have been taken. As the American yeah. auto industry was swerving to avoid a disastrous crash last year, President Obama handed the steering wheel to a wealthy Wall Street investment banker who'd only appear at the rear of the president's news conferences, but played a central role in the crisis. How much did you know about the auto industry going into this? Uh, roughly zero. <laughs> but Steve Ratner got a crash course. As a lead advisor on the president's auto task force, a job the media dubbed the car czar, Ratner helped allocate billions of TARP dollars to try to save Detroit. I would wake up in the night sometimes and say to myself, this whole auto industry is resting on whether our team can figure this problem out. And it was pretty scary. It looked even scarier when in March of 2009, Ratner and the auto team went to look under the hood of GM on a visit to the Motor City. Did the management at General Motors surprise you? I was shocked. In his new book, Overhaul, Ratner calls the company's bookkeeping mind-bogglingly shoddy. It was the worst finance group we'd ever seen. The worst finance group you've ever seen? Pretty much. This is a company that could not tell you on any given day within $500 million how much cash it had. Just uh, updating the congressman on what's going on in the auto business. As GM came to Washington, bleeding billions in losses, and begging for what would ultimately be a $50 billion bailout, CEO Rick Wagoner blamed the Japanese, the unions, and the economy, everyone but himself. Was GM at all prepared for bankruptcy? No, they were. They had done nothing. Not only were they not prepared, but Rick Wagner had very specifically said he didn't want to prepare. What kind of position is that for an executive to take? Uh, frankly, it's an irresponsible position. At what point did you decide that Rick Wagner needed to go? Quite early on. On March 26, 2009, Ratner called the GM CEO to his office in the Treasury Building and fired him. I said to him that back in mid-March, he had graciously offered to step aside if the government thought it was necessary and that we had concluded it was. Wagoner's response was to point the finger at the union boss of the United Auto Workers. He asked me if I was going to fire Ron Gettelfinger, the head of the UAW, and I think that was his way of saying, this is Ron Gettelfinger's fault, at least as much, if not more, than it's my fault. Mm -hmm. I said I wasn't in charge of firing Ron Gettelfinger. Wagoner's successor to cut costs would propose selling the Renaissance Center, GM's iconic headquarters in downtown Detroit, and moving the company to the suburbs. And when I exposed that to some of my White House colleagues, they said, are you out of your mind? We really can't let GM leave Detroit when Detroit had, I believe, literally 25% unemployment at the time. How quickly was that idea abandoned? Less time than this interview uh, has taken. <laughs> <laughs> Ratner, who reported to the president's chief economic advisor, Larry Summers, concluded the only way to save GM was for the government to buy it. You made an early promise to Larry Summers. You said to him, don't worry, we're not going to own GM. I was wrong. Did he blanch when you told him that it was going to be 61% ownership by the U.S. government? He grimaced. Uh, we all grimaced. But Ratner says the president signed off on it more easily than he signed off on saving Chrysler, over which the task force was divided. At the meeting to determine Chrysler's fate, the vote was four to three in favor of letting Chrysler fail. Larry Summers turned to me and said, you gotta make a decision. I hemmed and hawed and agonized, and I finally said we should try to save it. That made it four to four, and Larry uh, cast the deciding vote within that particular meeting, which was to go to the president with a recommendation that we save it. It was March of 2009, Ratner remembers, and the recession was at its worst. We were looking into a black hole, and it just seemed like an imprudent risk to let Chrysler go as some kind of social experiment to see what would happen if we felt it could be made viable. What do you think would have happened if we hadn't saved GM? Those two companies together, you would have lost a million jobs instantly. The entire auto industry and all the ancillary pieces that are around it and all the people who depend on it for their livelihoods would have been out of work. It would have been an economic disaster beyond all comprehension. 
After GM and Chrysler emerged from bankruptcy, Ratner left the auto task force to face his own problems, an investigation into whether he and the firm he founded, the Quadrangle Group, had bribed officials to get pension fund investments, accusations he denies in his book but won't discuss. I, I can't say anything about it. General Motors, the company he helped rescue, is profitable again. Would you buy GM stock now? At the right price, I would definitely buy GM stock. The taxpayers paid more than $80 billion to save the auto industry, but Steve Ratner says he has no regrets. The industry is actually adding jobs for the first time in a long time, mm -hmm. and so I feel good about it, and I, I feel like we did the right thing.